Thank you. Mr. Blakey, seven minutes, please. Thank you very much. I was wondering, uh, in the supplementary estimates, is there any money set aside to reimburse Canada Post workers who are on short-term disability during the rotating strike? No, there is not. Do you think it's fair that they should go five weeks without being, they're already on making 70% of their salary because they have a work-related disability? Do you think it was fair that they didn't get paid for five weeks? Are you, are you, it has to do with the fact that at the, at when the decision was made to do the rotating strike, the collective agreement effectively terminated. And as a result, the benefits under the, that agreement terminated. So that was I, a decision I don't that think the, it was fair that was a at decision all. That, that, that was the, a decision that the corporation made. They could, have, they could have decided to carry on with those benefits. And in fact, it's a decision you could have made. And in fact, they did carry on with some of the benefits. They continued yeah, on with the disability benefits. Yeah, but there the are a lot of people who benefits. didn't get paid their short-term disability benefits. And do you think that that's fair? Short-term disability continued for individuals who were on short-term disability, as I understand it. What the, that's not our understanding at all from but the we can, I can get that clarified to you. My understanding? On short-term disability. Okay. So, so then the question becomes, why is it? I mean, we brought this up in the House. Why didn't you get on the phone to Canada Post Management and get the answer then, and then and reinstate the benefits for those people? We know that under the Canada Post Corporation Act, the corporation exercises its powers and 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 uh, and duties uh, in a way that it will comply with such directives as the minister may give to it. So, I mean, why did you not see a need to tell your corporation not to cut off disabled workers during a rotating strike? To be clear, to be clear, Canada Post workers weren't out every day. It was a rotating strike. So in any given region, you've got maybe up to four days that Canada Post workers weren't working. And every other day they went into work, they delivered the mail and they got paid. But the people who are on short-term disability who are already only collecting 70% of their salary didn't get paid at all. How are they going to make that money back if government doesn't reimburse them for the money they lost during that rotating strike? My understanding is that most benefits continued and Canada Post put in place a process by which employees could make requests for special um, compensation and none of should, those requests were denied. Why do you think denied. they should have to ask for special treatment when those are, they, when those are benefits that they're entitled to? All they literally had to do was make the corporation aware of their loss and they the would have been reimbursed. Except that the corporation decided to make a mean-spirited decision as a tactic to try and break the strike, one that you endorsed by doing nothing. I don't characterize it that way, sir. Well, I do, and so do the and so do the many postal workers across the country. Are you not listening to them? Or are you only listening to Canada Post Management? I think we've done a very good job over the past year of working hard to repair the relationship between management and union that had been significantly fractured in the decade before. Well, I'll tell before. you what. When we workers doing, went back uh, after Canada you legislated Post them back to work, a new vision that put service to Canadians first. Well, when Canada Post workers went back after being legislated back by your government, one of the first things they found out was that despite the fact that there were only maybe several days during the five weeks that the rotating strike was happening, the Canada Post was telling them that for the uh, accumulation of their personal leave and their vacation leave, they were being told that the entire, for the entire five weeks, Canada Post was going to dock them from their personal leave and their vacation leave. Now, you tell me as the person responsible for Canada Post, how you think that's going to improve labour relations between Canada Post management and the workers? Well, I can tell you there's definitely some, the, the relationship is not where it needs to be to move forward with So why are you letting your management poke them in the eye I have when you say you want better relations? in the newly established leadership of Canada Post. We have a brand new board and a brand new chair and acting interim CEO. And they have done a significant amount in terms of addressing the needs of Canada Post employees. Well, and what I'm issues, telling you today, whether it be bullying and harassment, what I'm telling or addressing you, issues of overtime, they are moving ahead on these. What really I'm telling you issues. today, on behalf of the many postal workers that have contacted my office, so it's not coming from me, is that when they reported back to work, because they were because they were required by your law to report back to work, one of the first things they heard was that Canada Post was going to dock their personal leave and their vacation leave for the entire duration of the strike, notwithstanding the fact that almost every day of that strike, they went into work and, the, and they reported to work. And that's a consequence of your legislation. Your legislation specifically exempts the entire strike period for counting uh, against that, that accumulation, never mind the fact that they were going to work. So how do you think you're going to improve labour relation management and get a negotiated solution when you allow your management as their first act after legislating those people back to work to poke them in the eye. How do you think that promotes better labour management relations? 
I appreciate and sympathize uh, the toll, with the toll that the labor dispute has taken, particularly They don't need your employees. sympathy. Well, they they need you to do something about a management that repeatedly decides this is to not poke the Canada and prod Post them management and take them on. Past. This is a well, new actually, Canada Post management. if you talk to the workers there, they'll tell you it is. Look, I know how passionate Mr. Blakey, you and, and others are when dealing with this. This was a long simmering dispute and I can understand uh, all of that, and I can understand why the questions you are posing to the minister um, are such that it may tend to inflame the emotions again of members around this committee or members of the union. However, all I'm suggesting here, sir, and to the minister, is that we continue to do what we always do at committee and treat our, all of our witnesses with respect. The questions should be direct, should be aggressive at times if you feel so that uh, they should be posed in such a manner. But I would also ask the minister to answer direct questions with uh, direct questions with direct answers if possible. But I'd like to keep this on a level that is uh, respectful of both the minister and the witnesses along with her. Mr. Blakey, you've got about two and a half minutes left. Thank you. I'll come back to a comment that the minister made about, you know, this isn't the Canada Post of years past. One of the things that Canada Post is, is paying for right now with interest is a decision to deny uh, Canada Post workers their, um, their sick leave during a previous rotating strike and subsequent lockout, and then they were legislated back to work. And, and after years of significant costs to, to the union representing those workers and to the corporation itself, an arbitrator determined that actually there was a, an acquired or vested right to those, to those benefits, and the company was not within its rights to deny those benefits. Now we've seen something similar happen with respect to, uh, to the short-term disability plan. And so when, when people who've worked there, because there's many people who worked there in 2011, and many people who worked there today and span that whole period, when they look at what happened in 2011 and they look at what ha what's happening now, Canada Post Management is adopting the same techniques. They decided to take away sick days, which was what obtained at the time in 2011, and they decided to go after short-term disability, which, which replaced those sick days now. So when they look at that situation, they don't see what's different. Canada Post engaged in the same kinds of strike-breaking tactics in 2018 as it did in 2011. So why don't you explain to those people who don't see it in their daily work life what exactly you think the difference is between Canada Post management techniques in 2011 and Canada Post management techniques today. Thank you. Well, I am of the firm belief that Canada Post management um, is behaving differently than it has in the past. We gave uh, a very um, uh, forward-looking mandate to the new chair uh, in January of this year that corresponded with our service focus vision for Canada Post. We put at the very top of the list to improve relations, um, as I indicated, were fractured between management and labour. Um, I know personally, um, when I have met with unions, um, the leadership of Cup W in particular, they are grateful for some of the initiatives that management has taken, as I referred to, uh, particularly with respect to bullying and harassment and dealing with a very um, clunky past process on overtime that the CEO pardon me, that she was the chair at the time, had dealt with directly. Um, I think it's but unfortunate... I mean, one of, the, one, of the major, one of the major issues has been that Canada Post uses mandated overtime repeatedly. Fortunately, and I have given some additional time for my intervention, but we are out of time for this intervention. Mr. Blake, please. Thank you. And I'm certainly going to take Mr. Duray and his word that if Mr. McCauley moves his motion again, he won't have any reason to vote against it. Um, Madam Minister, in, in Clause 6 of the Back to Work legislation, it... Uh, it extends the provisions of the collective agreement, but it excludes the period for which there was a strike. It doesn't make any distinction between a rotating strike and a full-blown strike. Do you think that it made a material difference to the operations of Canada Post that the strike was a rotating strike as opposed to a full strike? I would suggest that the uncertainty and the economic impact of the rotating strikes were quite significant. Um, you, don't, don't, you don't think there was a difference between what would have happened to the mail under a full strike 
as opposed to a rotating, rotating strike? Is that what I'm, is that oh, what no, I'm hearing no, you say? Oh, no, 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 I, I, would, I would assume, although having not lived so, it, that... So a, why do you think it didn't make a difference for people on short-term disability that their pay was completely suspended for the five weeks if Canada's post-delivery was not completely suspended for the five weeks? In fact, not even close. I don't think I can answer that question to your satisfaction, well, sir. Could you, could you commit to reimbursing those folks on short-term disability who didn't get paid at all for five weeks, despite the fact that the operations of Canada Post continued and the mail got delivered? I can't make that commitment at this time. Well, I think that's unfortunate to hear because that's exactly the kind of commitment I think those people are owed. I mean, you know, we, the, the, the delivery of the mail and the profits of Canada Post were not suspended for five weeks. That makes no sense to me why your government would choose in the back to work legislation not only not only to have agreed with the decision in the first place but then to protect the company uh, within within your legislation your government's legislation from having the union be able to take any action retroactively because that's what clause six of your agreement does why was that why was that provision included in the back to work legislation I unfortunately don't know why it was or wasn't. We'll have to confirm. So you're the with minister Department responsible for Canada Post. I am, and I and I, you don't know why clauses were included or not included in the back to work legislation for Canada Post. The back Post? to work legislation was within the responsibility of the minister. Am I to understand that you, as the minister for Canada Post, wasn't consulted on the back to work legislation? And and as a member of cabinet, I mean, even I can, just as a member of cabinet, was there not a cabinet discussion? about the back-to-work legislation, where you reviewed the various clauses of the legislation? Are you, are, can I answer now? Yes, please. Okay. So what I will tell you is the Minister of Labour, as the lead on the back-to-work legislation, absolutely will work very closely. We work very closely together. I'm hesitant to give you a rationale for when I don't have that information in front of me as to why we chose specific wording or a specific clause or not, but I can definitely get that information to you. Well, I think it would be important, particularly in light of the fact that the company is now using that clause in order to uh, deny an appropriate accumulation of, of personal days and vacation days to workers that are that are back. Thank you, Mr. Blakey.